friends, it is Rachel here with Yarn at Play. Uh, today I'm going to do a tutorial on my Addy knitting machine for this kitty cat hat. I made some of these today for my kiddos. I will put a picture up here so you can see what that looks like. Um, <clears throat> and they turned out really, really cute. And I really loved how they worked up, so I am going to do a tutorial on this for you today. Now it's going to have a different joining technique up at the top, one that you might not be very familiar with. This pattern does not use any waste yarn. So hang in there with me and we will get through it together and hopefully you will be able to make this super adorable hat for yourselves at home. Here's another one that I made, slightly bigger size, in this pretty rainbow yarn. So let's get to it. I am using for my yarn today, um, I love this yarn in the color ivory. And I am also using, I love this yarn in the color Blossomopolis. Bit of a mouthful, but there it is. So those are the two colors that I'm using today. Uh, to get started, we are going to cast on as normal. And we are going to be using, uh, doing uh, 60 rows in our ivory color. So leave a tail and then just go every other needle, casting on as you normally would. If you are familiar working with knitting machines, you just go every other needle around. Now, let me clear my counter here a minute so I have an accurate row count. All right. Let me grab my yarn tensioner a minute. So the yarn tensioner I use, I got from... Uh, Savlabot. It is a Etsy shop. She also has a YouTube channel. Um, I will link it down in the description box below. So if you want to get your hands on one of these yarn tensioners, you can. They're a really great option to use with the Addy. I use mine every single time I use my Addy. I have a bunch of them now. This is paper that's on here. This is actually a clear acrylic, um, but I just leave the paper on until it starts to peel off because it's easier for me to find on the floor when it falls. So I'm gonna slide my tensioner in and I'm gonna put my yarn in the small spot here because I am making a child size hat. If I were making an adult size hat, I would probably move it out to the second tension here just so there'd be a little bit more room to stretch um, and it wouldn't quite be so snug. So I'm gonna keep working my first couple rows here and then I will grab my power screwdriver and knock out my first 60 rows. So I'm gonna buzz out my first 60 rows in the ivory color here and then I will meet you when I'm all done with that. So I have done my 60 rows here in the ivory color and I'm going to change color to the Blossomopolis. So I'm just going to cut my yarn here, take it out of the tensioner in the little carriage and make sure it stays hooked on my last needle that I want it hooked on and then just drop that in the middle. Move this color out of the way. Then I'm going to grab my second color and now if you want to do this all in one color, you absolutely can. You do not need to change color. I just simply did because I liked the way that like the fake brim kind of looked. 
but you can stick with one color if you don't want to have to deal with changing colors. If you do want to change colors, these are the row counts you want. You want 60 in your first color that's going to be on the inside of the beanie, and then you want 40 in the color that is going to be your second color. So go ahead and put that in, making sure that it is on the left side of the needle so your yarns are coming in the same spot right here. Put that into the tensioner. Hold these together so that they don't come apart. And then once they're through, you can drop those. Sorry, my camera's shaking a little bit. It's attached to the table that my machine is on. So I'm just going to crank through the last 40 rows here. And then I will tell you more when we get to the end and we take our work off of our machine. So we've made it to row 100 and I'm going to take a nice long tail from my yarn, probably a couple of yards worth of yarn because we're going to use that for our sewing as well. And then go ahead and snip that off, get that out of the way and we will start taking this off of our machine. And we're going to take this off of our machine in the exact same way that you would normally take a beanie off of your machine. All right, took me a second to get my needle threaded, but we got it threaded here. Let me shift my camera here a little bit. And we are just going to start taking this off of our machine. So you poke your needle down through, in between, up, and through. And just go all the way around until you have your work all the way off of your machine. So we got that all the way off of our machine. I am going to go ahead and pause the video here and move my machine out of the way and we will get to finishing. All right, so here we have our piece freshly taken off of our machine. I'm just gonna give it a little stretch. And we have a hole right here from where we changed color. So we need to take care of that first. So turn it inside out. And then tie a knot. I just do a regular overhand knot. Make sure you don't pull it too tight because then it will pucker your work. You just want it to be a loose knot to make sure that you're not pulling those threads and creating bunching. So I do two and then I do one more. So I do a total of three overhand knots and then that third one because the knot is secured with the two that one I really pull on to make sure that it's not going anywhere. And I leave a little extra tails. It's on the inside of the hat. No one's going to see it. And flip that back out. And now you would never know that was there. So 
go ahead and find your tails. The first one is easy to find because it still has our needle attached to it. Our one over here, find your tail, and then we're going to pull on this thread just a little bit to get some of that curl to go down. But we just want to be careful because we're not going to pull it tight like we would if we were making a puckered top hat. Like a regular double beanie, we're not doing that. We're just going to pull it a little bit so it stays in line with kind of the width of the piece already. You're just taking some of that extra slack out of there. And do the same thing with your other side. Just getting some of that extra yarn slack out of there. All right, now you're gonna reach through and you're gonna grab the bottom and pull the piece so it's doubled in on itself. Just like that. And then you want to find your inside edges and make sure that your yarn tails are lining up on the sides of your piece. Now if you started and ended your piece on the same needle, this should not be a problem. They should line up. All right, so I'm gonna get real close in here because this is a technique that you might not be familiar with for sewing this closed. Now it's a little bit fiddly here at the start, but it's easier in the middle and then it's a little bit fiddly at the end. So hang in there with me. Just take your time. I'm sure that you will be able to do this. So you can see our binding off yarn has all these little loops on it. That should not look unfamiliar to you if you are used to using knitting machines. And that is the same case here on our other um, slack thread. Pull that. A little more snug there. You don't want to pull it too tight because if you do pull it too tight then you might lose track of where your loops are and that is not going to help you. So just be careful not to pull it too tight. Alright, did I lose any loops? One right there a little bit. Okay, we should have all of our loops. So what we're going to do is make sure that your ends line up here. So you want your, your yarn tails to be right next to each other. And then what I'm gonna do is, you see how this yarn is coming through this loop? We're not gonna go back through that loop first because that would mean that we're unthreading that stitch and we don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna look for the one right next to it, which is right here. I'm gonna go with my yarn needle and pick up that loop and pull that yarn all the way through. And then I'm going to look over here on my interior yarn for the same thing. Now this is was my starting foundation chain so this one looks a little bit different. Um, the yarn comes out in a slightly different place but we can still find where we need to go. So find you see how that yarn kind of goes underneath that yarn right there? Don't worry about that. Just go into this first one that you see here. So you see how that loop thread is loose right there? Go into that first one right there. Okay, pick up that loop and pull it through. Now what we're going to do from here, I'm just going to tuck my yarn tail down in there so it's out of the way, is look for the loop right next to the one that you went through on our secondary color here. 
So we don't want this one, that's the one that we just pulled it through. We're going to go for this one right here. Pull that through there. And then look, the same thing, you're going backwards to look for this loop. So this is the one that we just went through, right here. Go backwards one loop, and pull through there. Now that we have our, fun, our first few loops established, what you can do is pinch your sides and hold them together and look for your next loop. So we've gone through the yarn on this loop. We've gone through the yarn there. So this is my next loop here. And because they're all kind of on a drawstring going around, some of them might be really close together, some of them might be further apart. But just make sure that you're going into the next loop. I'm going to pick that one up. And I'm going to look over here on my white that's on this side of the hat. Make sure you're not grabbing the yarn that, or the, the work that's on this side. On the same side of the hat, I'm going to look for that next loop right here. I'm going to pick that one up. So I'm picking up two from this side. The colored yarn and the interior yarn. I'm going to pull that through both. Then I'm going to look at the other side. I'm going to look for my next loop over here. Always do the colored side first. Put that through. And then look for your next interior yarn loop, which is right here for me. And pull through those two. And you're going to keep doing that exact same pattern all the way across the hat. So. We went through this loop already, so my next loop is way down here, so I'm going to pick that one up. Then look on the white yarn on the inside. And these, these ones are the ones that get a little tricky and they can hide. So look for that next loop, pull that one up, and pull through two. Go back to the other side. Pick up your next loop on the outside fabric first. Always do the outside fabric first. And then find your next loop on your inside fabric. Pull through. Now that I have a few done, I can pull on this and this will close that up really nicely. Now don't too, pull too tight or your corner will start to pucker in. But we're catching all of our fabric and we're getting this closed up so it'll have a nice even and smooth top seam without doing any crocheting. Now I am a crocheter at heart. I usually default to always crochet rather than sew. And if you want to use waist yarn and do this with waist yarn and then um, slip stitch your top closed, you can definitely do it that way as well. I just find that doing it this way gives me a little bit of a cleaner edge for this style of hat and so I prefer to take the time to sew it closed this way. It's a bit more time consuming if you're not familiar for looking for those loops that your working yarn has gone through it can be a little bit fiddly but if you take the time to practice it this is a really great technique to have in your pocket for seaming ends closed. And you can do this as well, even when you're not doubling up, in order to close off an end without using waste yarn. So I'm gonna keep working on this seam edge and then I will meet you down at the other side when I get this all closed up.
so I'm getting to the end here and it's going to get a little close and a little harder to see those loops. It's going to look, uh, might look a little bit of a mess, but stick with it. I have one, two, three, four, five more loops that I need to go through. And I have one, two, three, four, five more loops that I need to go through on my inside. So I'm getting close to the end. Just keep your pattern of doing one side and then the other, always going through the exterior loops before going through the interior loops. And you should be set. Once you do this a few times, it'll start to feel really familiar and it won't be nearly as intimidating to get done. Just keep doing your best and I know that you can get it down. All right, let's see, I have, looks like two more loops left. So I'm gonna go through my exterior one first. I'm going to look for that loop here in the interior, pick that up, oh, and I'm going to go through my, can I go through that? See, even I get a little lost. Nope, I haven't picked that one up yet. So I'm going to go through my exterior one here. And I have a loop right there. I'm sure it's difficult to see. But just kind of do your best and it will all work out. Okay, so I've gone through all of my loops. I'm gonna pull that down. But don't pull it tight because you don't want this top to pucker. You want it to stay flat. All right, I promise you that was the hardest part. If you got that down, you're good. I'm not sure why I have an extra thread that's pulled out there a little bit, but I'm not too worried about that because I will, I'm just going to kind of sew over that once and get that to tuck in. That should not be an issue. There we go. All right. So now that I have my corner, I'm going to put my needle in and through. And now what we're going to do, I'll show you that on this one, it's a little bit easier to see. We're just going to whip stitch down our edges here. And that'll make those ears so that when you put it on, that is how it will look. More like that. If that makes sense. So it's very simple to do this. It's a little bit, might be a little bit difficult just to get it even, but the more you practice it, the more even it'll get. If you wanna find a way to mark it so that you know exactly where you're gonna be putting your needle in and through, you can. Um, but I've just always eyeballed it and it's usually turned out just fine. Um, so I pulled my needle through to the interior of the piece gonna stick my hand up through and then I'm kind of like if you need a guide you can even use your finger I've done that before where you kind of just pinch your finger here at an angle so you have that triangle shape there and that can kind of guide you as to where to come up on the on either side so that your stitches are even so I'm gonna start there I'm going to go in right here and come out right on the top of my fingers on the other side. All the way through. And on the back side I'm going to do the same thing. Coming right up there. Through on this side, up on the other.
through on this side and up on the other and one more time I don't usually go all the way to the edges I don't really find it necessary if you wanted to I suppose you could but I don't really feel like it's needed um, and then you're gonna just snug that down so you can kind of see where your yarn is going in and out because I like to go back so I have more of a solid line there so I'm gonna look where my yarn came out right here it's a little tricky to see with this yarn being multicolored I apologize for that and I'm gonna put my yarn right back through and come up the other side in the same spot and just work my way back so I have a nice little whip stitch line or this is not a whip stitch this is a running stitch pardon me a running stitch line across I think it's a running stitch if I have my stitches done tell me in the comments I am NOT a sewer but I'm pretty sure that this is just called a running stitch all right and there we go so we have one side done just like that you can see how it's sewn across there and you can see how we have that line right there now and what I'm going to do is I'm going to work my yarn back through up to the top of my piece and have it come out there run it across my top edge just to get it in the right position to do the other side that way I don't have to tie off and have a bunch of knots that I need to work in and then I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to take my fingers I'm going to kind of look and see where I want that angle now this is a little bit trickier because you got to get it to match this side so you want it to be your fingers to wind up even as best you can so that your sides will be even I've had crooked ears before it's not the end of the world you just got to pick your stitches out and try again but um, if you can avoid that that's always preferred right so I'm gonna bring my yarn down through there and then I'm gonna start working my running stitch across just like I did on the other side Now if you have any problems with this, let me know in the comments. I will do my best to help you troubleshoot how to make this, but it is very simple. Once you get the techniques down, it's not a time-consuming pattern. It's great for kids. My children all loved it today. And it is just a lot of fun for them to have a little kitty cat hat. So now I'm working my way back through my stitches. And that is all there is to it. Now I am going to I make these running stitches a little bit snug just so that they do pucker in a little bit. Um, not like pucker like this way, but just so they're tied up against the work. Um, and then I'm going to poke my yarn back up through here. I'm going to turn my hat inside out. Poking my yarn right through the very very top so it comes straight out the other side right on top there and then I just do a single 
French knot, which is you poke your needle through, wrap your yarn around twice, and pull that all the way through until it is nice and tight. And then all you have to do is just weave your ends into the inside of your double layer so that they don't show. And I'll do my other, my other tail in a minute. But that's all there is to it. And you have a super cute child size kitty cat hat. Now it's not going to look quite, <laughs> it's going to be flat until it's put on. So when it's put on the head, that's when those little ears pop up and you can see exactly what that looks like. Very, very fun. Now this is child sized. If you wanted to make it adult size, I would use a looser tension and I would do maybe a few more rows depending on your head size. I have a very large head, so I know that I would definitely be doing that for me for sure, but for a child size, this is just perfect. I will make sure that you have all of the row counts in the description as well so that you can, um, or uh, excuse me, all the row counts on the screen here so that you can see exactly what row counts you need. If you wanted to do two colors, it is 60 of your interior color and 40 of your exterior color. If you wanted to do it all one solid yarn without breaking your yarn at all, it would be a total of 100 rows. So, and you can see how these different yarns work up. This is um, Red Heart Stripes. And this is I Love This Yarn from Hobby Lobby. You can see the size difference there. Um, same number of rows, but they worked up a little different. So depending on what your yarn you're using and the tension that you're using, um, just be aware that there is some variation in there. But as a general rule of thumb for a child size beanie, I usually do 100 rows. Okay. If this was helpful to you, if you like this hat, if you're planning on making it, please let me know in the comments. I would love to know. Um, be sure to give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful to you. That really goes a long way to making this channel more accessible to more people, which is really helpful for me because that way it is, um, it is good to have more people see it since I'm putting the time and effort into making these. And subscribe to my channel if you've not done that and you want to see more Addy Knitting Machine or Centro Knitting Machine tutorials. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. We'll talk to you all soon. Bye.